Hey, I'm Mike Farrington. Welcome to my garage, uh, or garage if I'm feeling posh. In this video, I'm gonna build this workbench top and this organizer you see behind me. And along the way, I'm gonna share a few organization tips. So let's go. Why don't we start with the workbench top? I went to my local home improvement store and picked a few alleged two by sixes out of their stack of either garbage or framing lumber. It's difficult to tell the difference. I bifurcated them and took them over the joiner where I cleaned them up. I didn't really joint them straight and square, just made them look a little nicer. Oh, and the glove is for grip in my case because my wimpy hands get tired. Next, over to the planer where again, just cleaning things up. Now it's time to begin the glue up. I try to orient boards where the worst ones are in the middle. My thinking is that a whack out board will cause me less issue both during and after the glue is dried if it's in the middle of the assembly. And when taming a cantankerous board, there's only one rule. Failure is not an option. I broke the glue up down into three chunks. This is the third chunk that I'm gluing together here. And much like how I eat my vegetables first to get them out of the way, at this point I'd put all the uglier pieces in the first two chunks I glued together. So this one was smooth operator. Not really an organization tip, but a workbench tip nonetheless. You can only know all the ways you will use a vise after having used one. It's shocking how much more I use this than I thought I would. It's a lower end Wilton vise, but it works well enough. Uh, these are called soft jaws. They come in many different flavors, and I think they are an essential accessory to a bench vise. Certainly couldn't have rebuilt this tilt cylinder without a good strong bench vise. Now that my three chunks are dry, I freshen up the faces at the jointer and planer. Here's one of my most favorite garage organization tips. These lids click onto good old fashioned five gallon buckets, turning them into liquid tight storage containers. Towels work well, of course, but so does used motor oil. Since I changed the oil in both my wife's car, my van, mowers and motorcycles, I needed a convenient way to store and transport oil to the recycler. Time to glue three chunks into one big chunk. Fortunately, since this is alleged framing lumber, it's fast growth trees that are lighter than balsa wood. So no, I don't have hulking strength. This lumber is just really light. This is a Stanley number no. seven bedrock hand plane. Once glued up, this thing was too cumbersome to wrestle through my wide belt sander without help. So I went old school and flattened it with a hand plane. Once flat, I trimmed the ends. This workbench top will sit directly on a couple Harbor Freight tool chests that I got on closeout. The top of the chests have some fins that stick up on the sides and back. Here I'm just marking out for and cutting some channels that those fins will poke into. This will help lock the top to the chests. After cutting the channels, but before flipping the top over, I lay down a coat of boiled linseed oil. Good lord, the Festool track saw could use some more power. Full depth cuts are slow. Anyway, I got the bright idea to add a backstop. My hope was to prevent stuff from rolling off the back of the bench. So I started by cutting a rabbit because he was eating the grass in my front yard. After that, I made this little notch for the backstop to sit on. The next bright idea I got was to drill a few holes in the backstop so I could store like screwdrivers and stuff. 
this ended up being a horrible idea. Basically, what happens is every time I put something in one of these holes, I end up looking for it for a half hour or so. Never make two homes for a tool when one will do. I do think adding the backstop was worth it though. Um, just held on with glue and nails. More boiled linseed oil for the top. Uh, don't get too picky, any oil will do. This is just what I had on hand. Always a pleasure when the shop apprentice makes an appearance, especially when he wants to help. Here's another organization tip. These hooks are specifically made to hang jack stands up and off the floor, out of the way, and easy to get to. What more could you want? All right, let's shift gears. Uh, the workbench top has been set aside. Now on to the cabinet organizer thingy. All the dimensions are based off of maximum yield. So the cabinet depth is about 11 and 3 quarter inches. This means I get four strips out of each sheet of plywood. The sides are about six feet tall and the shelves are about two feet wide. So that means I get one side and one shelf out of each strip of plywood or four shelves. One of the three cabinets will use shelf pins and three quarter inch thick shelves. I love this jig. I can cut a ton of shelf pins in short order. The other cabinets will use dados and one quarter inch thick shelves, which I'll show that in a minute. Time to put the first cabinet together. Glue and staples hold it together at the corners. Once the cabinet is fully assembled, I come back and add some screws for reinforcement. Time for another organization tip. This is a roll of magnetic sheet. Uh, it goes great in drawers, uh, but keep in mind it won't hold things that roll. Uh, they'll still roll back and forth. Um, they'll be harder to pick up, but they'll still roll. But it does work great for wrenches and other flat magnetic items. This is called Revolution Ply, sold at Lowe's. It's sold as five millimeters thick, which at least they're close on the thickness. If you want to break your brain, read the product certification literature for this plywood. It's comically convoluted. Uh, anyway, rest easy knowing it's made from 100% plantation and sustainable wood sources and contains less than 10% birch, so there you go. And what I'm trying to show here is that my one quarter inch dado is too wide for the five millimeter thickness. So I'm going to make two passes for each shelf slot for a nice snug dado. I'm going to use a little spacer to make the dado wider. So make a cut, add the spacer, make another cut. And if you're wondering, yes, this was a complete pain in the rear. About halfway through, I needed a checkup from the neck up because my thinking was stinking. But once I was done, I was happy with the results. Next step was to chop the revolution ply down into shelf-sized bites. I will say I like the look of this stuff. It kind of looks like veneers that have been edge glued and then glued down onto plywood. I wish they made it in three quarter inch. It would really make for nice looking cabinets. Time for another shop tip. I like to have a little thermometer so I know if I'm cold or not, knowing that relative humidity is nice as well. Okay, anytime you take a bunch of material out of one side of plywood, it's gonna to wanna to close on itself. Not to worry, I am a professional. I have lots of tricks up my sleeve to deal with this. First thing is if the back is cut nice and square, that will really get things looking better once it's stapled in place. Next up, I staple the partition in place, and then I use some blocking that I've cut to the correct length, and I've just tapped it in place to hold things nice and straight. Finally, I staple through the back into the partition to lock the partition in place. Last step is to add a couple of fixed shelves to further correct the two sides. So long as I've cut these to the correct dimensions, the sides will be pulled straight. Now 
The shelves are staggered so I could easily add screws from the inside. Yes, a power strip is an organization tip. Besides being able to plug stuff in, it has cool lights so you can see what you're doing. I find these very helpful. It also has a little shelf for your phone so you can keep it up and out of the way and charged. And if by this picture alone you could name the album or band, you are up to speed on your awesome 70s music. And by the way, rest in peace, Dickie Betts. All right, time for cabinet installation. The hardest part of installing cabinets is getting the first one right. Get the first one right so it can be used as a reference for the next one. On the second cabinet, I needed to cut a hole for some light switches. This is an easy place to make a mistake, so I double check my measurements. Not too bad, I'll deal with changing out the switches later. Now it's just a matter of clamping and screwing the cabinets together. I always pre-drill when doing this. It makes for a much better connection. Well, as it turns out, my wall falls way out of plumb here. I didn't want to use giant screws through the back of the cabinet. With a large gap like this, it can bow the back of the cabinet in towards the wall. Instead, I decided to install a ledger, then screw the cabinets to it. And I didn't want to look at that unsightly gap for the rest of my life, so I installed a piece of scribe molding. Last but not least, I began installing the shelves. Another shop organization tip, I guess. I installed an infrared heater. It causes the LEDs to flicker on power one and two, but not on three. Kind of annoying, but okay. It does get cold here in Denver, so having a heater is really nice. This is just big enough to keep me nice and warm while working at or around the bench. It's got a cool remote to control it. Well, I've been using the bench for a couple of months now. It's received a good beating, so I thought I'd make it look a little nicer for the finished shots in the video. Gave it a quick sanding and just threw another coat of oil on. This time I use butcher's block oil because it's what I had laying around. I smear some on, let it sit for a while, and then buff off the excess. A couple more quick shop tips. I like these LED lights. They're cheap and bright. Some have complained about them dying prematurely, but I've been running them in the boardroom for a couple of years. I think the key is don't turn them on and off constantly. Turn them on and leave them on. I also installed a couple of these drawer organizer things. I like them, but I should have gotten the one that has both big drawers and small drawers, and I could have gotten away with just one. Here's an up-close look at how the channels cut earlier fit onto the top of the tool chest. As you can see, a little chiseling was needed at the front. This really makes for a nice, secure, solid-feeling workbench. Here's a look at how the two different adjustable shelves work. My reasoning for the two systems is heavier stuff on the thicker shelves, hmm, and lighter stuff on the thinner shelves. The thin shelves really adjust quickly and easily. I mounted the cabinets at a height where buckets could fit under and gallon jugs of oil fit on top. Speaking of gallon jugs of oil, I like the small adjustable shelves because I can group things together for specific tasks, like all the stuff needed to change the oil on my wife's car. This helps my scatter brain stay somewhat organized. In looking at these closing shots, it still looks a little messy, but it's more organized and much more efficient than it was, so that's good. I'm really lucky to have this space. It's now comfortable year round, there's plenty of room, and it really is a pleasure to be able to spread out a project on a nice big workbench. Oh, and the shop apprentice approves of the bright green color. Links for stuff and things in the description, questions, comments, fears, or concerns, post them below. Thank you for watching, Till next time.